A very good morning to you this morning and welcome to the Morning Outlook Report. I'm Rachel Jones reporting live from Kalkine TV Sydney Studios. Now the ASX 200 is expected to fall once again this morning and that's as Wall Street fell sharply after US and Europe announced a series of sanctions against Russia following its movement of troops into two separatist regions of Ukraine. According to the latest spy futures, the ASX 200 is expected to open the day 15 points lower or 0.2 percent lower. The benchmark fell 1% on Tuesday to 7,161. And yesterday, the best performing sector was energy, up 1.9%, while the worst performing sector was information technology, down 3.2%. The best performing stock in the S&P SX200 was Cochlear. Their shares closed 9% higher at $207.37. The worst performing stock was Nanosonics. Their shares closed 13.1% lower at $4.10. Moving on to some business news from this morning now. And Woolworths reported their continuing operations sales are up 8% to $31.9 billion. But EBIT was down 11% to $1.38 billion. Net profit declined 6.5% to $795 million. Woolworths Group CEO Brad Banducci says while the far-reaching impacts of COVID resulted in one of the most challenging halves they've experienced, they ended the first half strongly with positive trading momentum and helped customers enjoy a much-needed Christmas celebration and festive holiday season. Omicron created new challenges in early January with a record number of team members isolating and material supply chain and stock flow issues. The board has declared an interim dividend of 39 cents. That's down from the 40 cents a share dividend it declared a year ago when they excluded the Endeavour Group. And Stockland is to uh, entered into an agreement with EQT Infrastructure to sell its retirement living business for $987 million. EQT will acquire Stockland's portfolio of 58 established retirement living villages, 10 development projects underway and in the planning, along with the associated management platform. Stockland today also announced it's entered into a binding agreement with Mitsubishi Estate Asia to establish the Stockland Residential Rental Partnership, a long-term partnership to develop and own land lease communities. Stockland reported that their revenue climbed 0.5% to $1.188 million, while net profit soared 149.1% to $837 million. Funds from operations fell 9.3% to $350 million, and Stockland declared an interim distribution of $0.12 cents a share, up slightly from a year ago. And Woolly profits have jumped despite flat revenue growth. Woolly is a leading global provider of professional project and asset services in the energy, chemicals and resources sectors. They announced an underlying MPADA of $150 million for the six months ending 31st of December compared to $117 million in the prior corresponding period. That statutory in Empata was 114 million compared to 60 million in the prior period, while aggregated revenue decreased slightly by 3%, and that was due to the timing of project activity. Chief Executive Officer Krish Ashton says this result is indicative of the continued market improvement, which is consistent with the outlook presented at the full year financial year 2021 results. Well, now it's time for a very short break, but stay tuned for more news set to affect your trading day. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Kalkine's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Kalkine TV.
Welcome back to the Morning Outlook Report. Over in the U.S., on Wall Street, the Dow Jones fell 1.42 percent. The S&P 500 tumbled 1.01 percent, and the Nasdaq ended 1.23 percent lower. The European Union agreed on new sanctions against Russia, while German Chancellor Olaf Scholz halted the new Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline from Russia and Britain acted against Russian banks. In the global markets, the stocks 50 ended flat, the FTSE gained 0.1%, the DAX slipped 0.3%, and CAC ended 0.011% lower. The MSCI World Equity Index shed 0.51% after earlier falling 1.5%, with the index at levels not seen since the 28th of January this year. Crude oil prices rose as traders bid higher oil prices after Ukraine-Russia tensions escalated. Brent crude futures settled up 1.5%. 5% at $96.84 a barrel. WTI crude rose 1.4% at $92.35 a barrel after earlier hitting 96 US dollars and that's its highest level since August 2014. Gold prices hit their highest in almost nine months yesterday before pulling back as investors awaited more developments on the Ukraine crisis. Spot gold was down 0.2% at 1,902 US dollars an ounce. US gold futures rose 0.2% at 1,904 US dollars. And that's all from our Morning Outlook report here on Calkine TV. Have a great day trading and stay tuned for more market updates and economic news live throughout the day. This is Rachel signing off for now.